think that's clear. All right, anyway, been a minute, everyone. I had the lookbook video, which took an enormous amount of time. I didn't put out a vlog that week. And then teachers, parents, you know that like leading up to the beginning of the school year, it is crazy town, which is exciting also. Like I don't mean to say that to put anyone off and say that I'm not enjoying it because I am enjoying it, but it has been taking up a lot of time, like going back to school shopping for my kids and going back to school shopping for me and biting off more than I can chew as usual with my classroom. And then I make this stuff and I can't even move the things I'm building to the school because they don't fit in anything. Are you watching me? My not so secret daughter is watching. Or this video is a little bit different in that we didn't, time was so crunched at the beginning of the year that it was like kids friends were over and we were down the shore for a couple of days and we had other stuff going on and we were doing, spending a lot of time together as a family. That it was like whenever I could fit in going shopping or working on my classroom or building stuff, that's when I got it done. So there's like far less coherency to this video than to past videos. But that's, I feel like what it's like in the beginning of the school year. And being a more veteran teacher at this point, I feel like you just realize that that's the gig. Like it's never perfect in the beginning of the year. Things never go flawlessly. You really just have to learn how to roll with stuff so that you can accomplish things when you can and get things to the best that they can be before the beginning of the year. Do not let perfect be the enemy of good. All right, so I know this is a little bit late of a video, but I think it's still super useful because I know a lot of you are getting your classrooms ready. Maybe you got moved to a new room this year. Maybe this is your first year ever teaching. Maybe you, are like me, got the same room again, but you bit off more than you could chew. One of the things I think is so crucial to remember about classrooms is that you can have ongoing work. That if it's not completely 100% ready on the first day of school, it's all right. You have a whole year to like tweak and move things and change things. Don't burden yourself with that feeling at the beginning of the school year because it's not worth it. As long as you're ready for all of your daily routines and practices that the students are going to be engaged in and that's organized, you're good. But if your markers aren't all set or if your private bins aren't all labeled or if your binders aren't all organized, we can really stress about that sort of thing. And it's really not worth it because you can still keep going in the beginning of the year and on into like, sometimes my room's not ready up until about Halloween. Sometimes it's not ready up until about June. And then I have to like undo the whole thing again. So I just wanted to, for someone to say that to you out loud in case no one else has said it to you out loud. So here's a little bit on my classroom setup. Uh, we go back to school this week, September 6th. This is our first day back. So I know some of you have been back for like three weeks, but you know, I'm still gonna throw these ideas out there for you anyway, because maybe your room's not done. First, um, I've talked about this a lot before. I think that retail stores lack on creating high school classrooms. There's a lot of really cute stuff out there. Like if I, I think Pinterest lends itself a lot to, to, to cute classrooms and to pretty classrooms, but I want a classroom that reflects who I am. And so to have that, I have to end up making a lot of my own stuff. And none of my ideas are like strictly like for male classrooms or something like that. I think they're very gender neutral, all of my ideas, but I want my classroom to represent who I am and I want to create a safe and warm place for my students to learn in. So many of my ideas have pretty much no educational value to them. But what I want to do is create a feeling, create like a vibe in my classroom that's gonna make my kids feel safe and put them in a place that says that their teacher is excited about teaching and about them learning. I did a lot this year. Folks that aren't on YouTube, please don't look at people that are on YouTube and wonder like if you're not doing enough or that you could do so much more. Pick one thing, pick one thing this year. There's that one area that you wanna do flexible seating in. There's that one area that, you know, your book nook, you wanna like recreate that and make that look more beautiful. There's your circle rug that you sit on and you wanna create that space and make that comfortable and make it a place of learning for your students. Work on one area and then if you have time, move on to another area, but don't feel like you need to get every single thing done. This is my, fourth year in this classroom, which is like unheard of in my school, like almost no one stays in the same classroom. So the fact that I'm in there, again, allows me to like keep things up and then the next year I can just add on to that and the following year I can add on to that. And then this year, like I said, a bit off a little bit more than I could chew, but I'm gonna talk about that right now. First thing I did was I painted my front wall of the room. Am I allowed to paint my own 
walls, I don't really know, but it looks a lot better than it did. And so I can't imagine anyone's gonna come in and complain about it because it used to be this awful yellow color. And then I decided to get like a bluish gray color because I read that that is like more calming for students. We'll just take off and we'll have a super time. All we're doing is putting in some color for the shadows of our clouds. Given the class that, I, that I'm teaching this year, I think that that could be very useful because before it just looked like hot diarrhea. It looked like baby food. It's like the inside of a rotten pumpkin. It didn't make anybody happy, including myself. On a different wall in my room this year, I used to have all of these bookshelves, these floating bookshelves on my wall that I had, and I decided to remove those and use those somewhere else. And Instead, I wanted when the students walk into the classroom, the wall in front of them would have books that were all facing out. I get asked a lot if I'm allowed to put holes in my wall. The truth is I've never asked. The idea here is to make it look as attractive as possible so someone would come in and never ever think of asking you to take it down because it looks so great. made these ledges this afternoon and I find that you know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover but guess what we judge books by their cover all the time and if a book has a cool cover you're more apt to read it like these are some of my favorite covers lately mixed in with some books that I just want people to really know that I have and the idea here in all of this stuff is for kids to walk in and to immediately be hit by a book display that looks cool. I'm gonna put two big lights off the top of this that come down. I have my little board that I got at the thrift store. Or what did we get at the flea market the other day? Four dollars. And it came with like two whole big giant bags of letters. Yeah, yeah, that thing's like 35 bucks at, uh, at Target right now. This is gonna be illuminated, the whole thing. And again, the whole idea here is to make books look attractive so that maybe you'll pick one up and want to read it. Or when I ask you to read one, you'll remember one of the books that you saw displayed around the room in such a way and it gets you excited about it. And I want my classroom to be a place where books just look cool. Like they're on shelves that look attractive. They're displayed in such a way that it draws you over to them and makes you want to check them out. I mean, bookstores do this all the time, so why shouldn't we as teachers do it? The next thing I did was I removed two bookshelves. I, this is such a privileged sounding thing, right? But one reason I got rid of them is I don't like when stuff doesn't match. You know, when you've been in the classroom long enough, I don't want my classroom to look like a dorm room that has like 27 different types of furniture in it. And maybe that's your classroom and maybe you love it, but for me, I like consistency. I like things matching. I like the way that that looks. And I try and find really cheap ways to do that. So one of the ways I did was one, I got rid of these old bookshelves and two, I just took more of my floating bookshelves and put them on the wall. <laughs> the other reason I wanted to do this was I wanted to create space for a word wall. This year for vocabulary, I'm gonna use a word wall. I've never done this before, but the school ordered me a nice bulletin board that I can put in the front of the room and I needed room to put that up. So I had to get rid of the bookshelves that were there before so that I could do this. If anyone doesn't know, a word wall is just a place where you put your vocabulary every week. And then I'll put different like pictures up there and definitions, synonyms, antonyms. And we're gonna do a bunch of different experiments this year using the word wall, but we'll see how that turns out. I also created this mammoth beast of an organizer. I said this in an earlier vlog when I started working on this. There are a number of artists that I like that I like their studios and I want to create something reminiscent of like what Oliver Jeffers has in his office or Mac Primo or what Tom Sachs has in his studio. So this is 72 inches long and this is what's gonna house all of those things inside. They'll all have custom cubby holes so that they can slide in and out as needed. And some of them will be fixed in there because they're already drawers that don't need to come out at all. So this big, beautiful thing back here, I bought at a yard or I bought on Craigslist. I had to drive an hour away to go pick it up, hour and 20 minutes, something like that bring it back to my house, but it's kind of awesome. All right, we're getting there. Um, I got the first two levels in and I gotta make 
uh, partitions between each one of these right here, but then we'll be all set and I can go to the next level and get the top back on this thing. So take a look real quick. So I created this beast. I didn't want to go to just like Michael's or AC Moore or, or anywhere else to buy organizational things because I wanted it to look eclectic. That's the, the look I was going for. So what we just started going to a bunch of different flea markets and we went to this place called Cowtown in Jersey, another place called Columbus in Jersey. And it's really, they could call them antiques. It's really some dudes that just went out trash picking, found some stuff and are selling it back to me. Being a high school teacher, you do have the luxury of not having to have as many supplies as elementary teachers have. My room doesn't need to look any particular way. Like all high school rooms can look different. And I think the freedom in that is that I can just do whatever I want in my room. So I'm really excited about that. It took three different vehicles to get that to my school. Tried to put it in the back of my car, didn't fit. Borrowed the van from the school, didn't fit in the back of that. Had to borrow a pickup truck yesterday from someone and then lug this, you know, 100 plus pound beast into my classroom. Thankfully, someone was there to help me. We got it in place and it's much bigger than I thought, but I am really excited about it. It's a really cool piece to have in my classroom this year. It took three cars to get this in my room because it's so heavy. And now it's here. It's much larger than I thought it was going to be. I'm not sure all of it's completely usable, but it looks cool. And now I have somewhere to display my stuff. Like weird things kids make me, like the time the kid made me a hot dog ashtray, even though I don't really eat hot dogs and I never smoked a day in my life. Or the kid that made me um, fried chicken ceramic with I think black tater tots. I'm not sure those are edible. It goes with my whole hodgepodge of weird stuff that students give me. Also, we have a donor's choose going on right now. Myself and my co-teacher, Miss Yonkers. You can find the link in the description below if you feel like you want to give to something like that. And if you don't want to give to something like that, or if you don't have the ability to give to something like that, maybe you do know someone that could help out. Because what I'm trying to do is for my students that need it, I'm trying to create spaces that have like standing desks in the back. So if someone's fidgety, if they have a hard time sitting down, uh, if they just work better, and if they're going to succeed more by standing rather than sitting, I feel like then that's an accommodation that I'm completely willing to make. And, and so my co-worker, Ms. Yonkers, found this standing desk in this crazy chair in the trash, and then they put it on Miss Cho's car and drove each of them. I don't recommend this, by the way. This is a poor decision. It's hilarious in the retelling, but in actual time is not safe. They put the table on top of the car, each of them with a hand out of the window and held onto it while they drove slowly to the school and delivered it. I really appreciate their daringness for the kids. Danger for the kids. My uh, co-teacher, Miss Yonkers, and my friend, Miss Cho, went out and found this desk. They got it in the trash with this sweet, like weird, getting your hair cut chair back here. We're gonna put these in the back somewhere and hopefully use this as a standing desk in the back of the room. Um, should be, should be cool. Then my one last thing that I did was, uh, teachers, you know, people always like borrow your stuff or maybe you're in the school where people borrow your stuff and then they forget to give it back or they purposefully don't give it back. I have speakers in my room that I mounted to the wall. Then I decided to mount my speakers to my wall, but I need a lot of bass for the, for the hip hop class. So I'm gonna mount this up in this corner and then I have my other speakers up there and hopefully this dissuades anyone from ever borrowing my speakers again and not returning them. So now they're screwed to the wall. So guess what, you can't borrow them. Sorry, because they're screwed to the wall. So I'm hoping that this is a better idea, that kids will be able to hear the music better and the, and the movie clips that I show in class better because the speakers are mounted in such a way that there's nothing obstructing them. I'm really excited about my room this year. I am completely unready for the beginning of the school year. My room, I didn't show a final picture because it's just not done. Because I went up yesterday and I get caught up talking to people or someone has an issue and they come to my room or I see old friends at the beginning of the year that you haven't seen for the summer and you wanna hear about what they're doing or who got engaged or who had a baby. That, you get wrapped up in that stuff and the next thing you know, your classroom's not done. So I'll probably go up this weekend, I'll finish up my classroom and I'll show you next week when I do a video about my first week 
what everything looked like when it was finished. Friends, if you see anything in this video that you have questions about, you're wondering how I made something or how I did something or how I got away with something, just go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I'll try my best to get back to you. If you have any questions about the beginning of your year that you're wondering about, you can hit me up in the question section below or on Tuesday nights, you can stop by Teacher Talk Live, my live show that I have on Tuesday nights where myself and a guest answer different folks' questions that they are wondering about in the world of education. This week's guest is, is MC School. I'm really looking forward to having him. He seems like a really interesting guy. And that's that. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Peace.